Sadly, there are many evil people out there. Now, thankfully, most of them go to prison, but there are some who manage to escape, and even worse, some who were never even caught. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another video. My name is Kennedy, and today we are going to be counting down some of the most terrifying people on the planet that have never gone to prison. Let's get started. First up in our number 10 spot is the Stone Man. Active between the years of 1985 to 1988 in Mumbai, India, this mysterious criminal is believed to be responsible for the death of 26 people, yet has never been found. The Stone Man got their name due to the cruel methods they used. They would target homeless people sleeping alone on the streets at night and use concrete blocks or stones, sometimes weighing up to 65 pounds, to to carry out their gruesome plan. According to the media, 12 people died at the hands of the stone man in Mumbai between 1985 to 1988, and then they moved to Calcutta where another 12 people were found dead in a single year. Now it's not known for certain if the Calcutta killer was the same as whoever committed the atrocities in Mumbai. Authorities did mention it could have been a copycat, but most seem to believe it was all one person or at least a group of people working together. Sadly, even now, no one has been charged for any of the 26 crimes and all remain unsolved, leaving this evil killer on the loose. Moving on to number 9, the Eastbound Strangler. In 2006, one fateful night, this unidentified monster took the life of four women and was never seen or heard from again. The killer targeted four New Jersey escorts and left their bodies behind the Golden Key Motel, face down in a row, facing east, and about 60 feet apart from each other. The victims were left fully clothed, minus having their socks and shoes removed, and all appeared to have been killed in the same way. Early on, there was speculation that it was linked to the Long Island killer, another unknown attacker, but was later ruled out by investigators. Despite 15 years of investigation, they have never been able to come close to any leads, and whoever was responsible has never been caught. Next up at number 8, Jane Toppin. Likely responsible for nearly 31 deaths, Jane, or Jolly Jane as she's often referred to, had a very unique motive. To have killed more people, helpless people, than any other man or woman who ever lived. She came from a very abusive household, and after her mother's death, she and her sisters were given up to an orphanage. Not much is known about what went on during her time there, but just two years after she was admitted, she was hired as a servant for a family in Massachusetts. As an adult, Jane began studying nursing, but soon she began fixating on elderly and sick patients, using them as test subjects for morphine and atropine injections to see what it would do to their nervous systems. Upon her arrest, she confessed that she would poison her victims before laying down with them and fondling their helpless bodies until they passed, admitting she derived pleasure from patients on the brink of death and felt as though she could see the inner workings of their souls through their eyes. During trial, she insisted on being declared sane as she wanted the possibility of release, but the jury ruled her unfit for trial and had her committed to an institution where she remained until her death. Coming in at number 7, Texas Killing Fields. What would seem like a normal 25 acre patch of land just off the highway near Houston, Texas is actually a haunting death field where more than 30 bodies have been found since the early 1970s. Nearly all of the victims found have been young women and there are apparently many more missing women from the area, but no remains beyond the 30 victims have ever been recovered. Despite the authorities best effort, it is un known how many perpetrators have contributed to the field, though it is suspected that more than one person is responsible. To date, only three of the cases have been successful in convicting an attacker, and the remaining 27 remain unsolved with no leads and no luck of where to turn next. Recently, in 2011, a film was made about the series of crimes associated with the notorious plot of land, but it was not received well and unfortunately did not kickstart anything more than up set families of the victims and a few false confessions to the atrocities. Moving on to number 6. 
the Honolulu Strangler. Credited with being responsible for the death of five women, this unidentified killer was active only between 1985 to 1986, but was never caught. The sadistic perpetrator was known to target women, but that seems to be where the links stop. All of his victims were brutally attacked and taken advantage of, and then left tied up on the street to be found by the police. Understandably, authorities took this case very seriously, as at the time it was the first known repeat criminal of his kind in Honolulu, so local authorities put together a 27 person task force. But even with all that manpower, they were never able to find the attacker. There was hope when a man named Howard Gay was arrested, as he seemed to fit the profile, but he was eventually released after further interrogation. Years later, in 2017, the case was covered by a true crime podcast, and once again in 2022, but despite its popularity, we have no idea what happened to the Honolulu Strangler, and they still likely roam free. Moving on to number 5. Bible John. Active between 1968 to 1969 in Glasgow, Scotland, a man nicknamed Bible John is believed to be responsible for the death of three young women, all of whom were young brunettes who he would lure at a local dance hall in the city. The unidentified criminal is referred to as Bible John, as according to a key witness, they saw a man who picked up women, yet quoted extensively from the Old Testament and frowned on adults. But apparently taking the lives of these young women seemed alright in his books. For decades, the Glasgow police have tirelessly searched for the monster, but have remained unsuccessful in tracking him down. To date, the search for Bible John has been the most extensive manhunt in Scottish criminal history. It was also the first time in Scotland's history that a composite drawing of the perpetrator was allowed and publicized in an attempt to get more information from the public. Although there have been a few suspects over the years, none have been convicted, and to this day it is unknown who is responsible for these horrible attacks. Moving on to number 4. Isai Sagawa. Unlike others on this list, he is only known for one brutal attack, but what he did will leave you speechless. Sagawa was born in Japan and says he had known since childhood of his gruesome instincts, but for whatever reason would always back out of his desires at the last second. All of this changed, however, when he moved to Paris to pursue his PhD and met Renee Hartvelt. Sagawa says he picked her due to her beauty and stature as he saw himself as weak, ugly, and small, and believed he could absorb her energy. He invited her over on the pretense of dinner, but knew all along what he planned to do. He took the woman's life and devoured her flesh over the next several days. But after four days, the body began to decompose, and he knew he had to get her out of his apartment or risk being arrested for his crimes. However, he was caught attempting to dump her remains in a nearby lake and was, of course, arrested immediately. After awaiting trial for two years, a judge ruled him legally insane and unfit for trial, ordering him to live out the rest of his life in an institution. But here is where it gets crazy. Once in this institution, the psychologists deemed him fully sane, and that his perversions were the reason for his crimes, not insanity. But since charges had been dropped while in France, all documents were sealed and nothing was sent to Japanese authorities, meaning that legally, the institution could not detain him any longer. So after only two years, Sagawa walked out and remains free to this day. Moving on to number three, the monster of Florence. Active between 1968 to 1985 in Florence, Italy, this man is responsible for the death of eight young couples who he targeted while they snuck away into the woods trying to be intimate outside their homes. Now, in 1970s Italy, this could often be a common occurrence, as it was customary for young couples to not live with each other until marriage, and with nowhere else to go, sometimes the great outdoors was their only alternative. The part about this that 
really gets under your skin is that the female victims would be found mutilated with their intimate areas removed with a surgical precision that led police to believe he had a medical background. More than a hundred thousand men were investigated for these crimes, with some being arrested and even tried. But eventually, another killing would occur, exonerating them and forcing police to continue the search for the perpetrator. The search continued for this gruesome monster, and a local farmer named Pietro Pacini was convicted in 1994 for six of the killings, but later in 1996 was overturned. Pacini died a few years later, but it is strongly believed that he did not work alone, and while five accused men have been jailed at one point in time, they were all eventually released, leaving this cade wide open with the alleged convict running free. Coming in at number two, the Frankfurt Slasher. Between 1985 and 1990, this monster preyed upon women in a rough neighborhood in Philadelphia. The Frankfurt Slasher was known for being incredibly violent, mutilating the victims beyond recognition, and what was designed to be on the inside of the body would often end up exposed. Then after having his way with the victims, he would leave them on the street, strategically posed for when the police would find them. Believed to be responsible for the death of nine women, the Frankfurt Slasher targeted specifically white women, usually escorts or women with a public history of mental illness, but oddly the age of his victims ranged from 28 to 68. One man, Leonard Christopher, was convicted of one of the crimes in 1990, but more happened once he was put away, causing concern that they found the wrong man. Further, significant questions have popped up regarding the quality of evidence used to convict Christopher. He apparently did not match witness reports of the white man seen with other victims, meaning the Frankfurt slasher was never found and never sent to prison. And last up in our number one spot is Pedro Lopez. Nicknamed the Monster of Andes, Pedro Lopez might be one of the most notorious criminals alive. After being kicked out of his childhood home at eight years old for taking advantage of his sister, Lopez was evicted and sent to live the rest of his childhood on the streets of Colombia. According to Lopez, not long after he was thrown out, he was abducted and assaulted but by 13 was taken in by a family who he ran away from two years later. By 1978, Lopez claims to have been responsible for the death of a hundred girls. That same year, an indigenous tribe caught him and was going to execute him, but a nearby missionary took pity on him and demanded they release him and call him into the authorities. The police, however, for whatever reason, promptly released him from custody. From there, he fled to Colombia once again, followed by Ecuador, where he reports to have attacked about three girls a week, and when he was caught and arrested in 1980, he confessed to killing 200 victims, but there is suspicion that it could have been as many as 360. Though he did remain jailed for 14 years, in 1994, he was released from prison for good behavior and sent back to Colombia to serve the rest of his sentence in a psychiatric facility. But only four years later, in 1998, he was ruled legally sane and released on a $50 bail. Rather predictably, he fled the country after his release and a warrant for his arrest was promptly released. His whereabouts remain a mystery and no one knows if he has committed any more attacks since he vanished. Well, that's all I have for you today, friends. I hope you liked this video. And before you go, let me know in the comments what terrifying criminals I missed. All right, I'm out. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.